What is up, everybody? It is Ojabi Garrett's uh, with the drama channel. Got all the drama. And today's drama I want to talk about is what I think will help people get better, do better. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm struggling to think of a topic right now, but I'm really just going for um, things that I wish somebody had told me when I was growing up. And the first thing I, I, I wish somebody told me that I was growing up is that it gets better. When you're an adult, when you finally get out from underneath everybody's feet, uh, under their thumb, and you can just go out and it gets better. Even if it's, even if you lose everything, perceivably everything, it gets fucking better, bro. Like, man, when I, when I left school and I felt like I had nothing going for me and nothing was ever going to happen to me, and then the days went by and the weeks went by and months went by, and I was still here, and I was still okay, and I was having fun with my friends, and though I was doing nothing productive, life only got better for me. So if there's anybody out there who's like struggling through school or struggling through a bad family life or struggling through just really anything, just know it does get better. And then another thing is I would say is like, I know this is super cliche, but stop fucking worrying, bro. Like stop giving a fuck. Stop caring about money. If you're going to be able to pay your rent on time for those bills, bro. Like if you don't pay your rent, what the fuck's going to happen? The landlord's going to get pissed off at you and then like start the long, tedious proce uh, process to get you kicked out. And even if you don't pay your rent and you get evicted and it gets on your record, who cares? Who gives a fuck, bro? Like there's like in my, I, I take, I prep or whatever. One of, one of my prepping strategies is like uh, identifying plants and stuff. And in my yard, there's like 13 edible plants. They'll, they'll, they wouldn't be able to sustain me for a long period of time. Um, they very easily could get me through a day worth day to probably like a week's worth of calories just in the um, the calories that are just from wild edibles in my yard and like it's it maybe unless you live in like New York City or something like that that's the same thing for you too um, but that aside too food is cheap like think about the things you actually need to survive like you need shelter sure yeah but like shelter in America is pretty much like good clothes you could have a good clothes and a tent and like you could go pedal. I'm th this is worst case scenario. I'm saying like this isn't an optimal. I'm not saying this is a better way to live. But I'm just trying to say like break it down to a level. Baseline, you're going to be okay. You know what I mean? Like a tent costs, like a good tent could cost like $200. And there's woods all over the country. Like we're still a lot of woods. And you could go pitch it. I remember my buddy or an old coworker, not really a buddy of mine. Um, he was telling me his experience being homeless. And he had a tent and he just like parked it outside of a mall uh, in the woods. That was behind the mall like where all the industrial parks and there was like this little patch of woods and he said he just like lived in a tent and it was close enough to the mall where he had wi-fi so like when he wasn't able to like do anything productive to get his like while he's waiting for like his id or whatever the hell he was talking about he would just sit on his cell phone and he just had like a cell phone a straight talk phone that had no service but he could connect to the mall's wi-fi so i mean like there's like even ways to entertain yourself and stuff like that it's just i think we all just need collectively to just stop giving a fuck and like there's this thing going on in China right now called uh Ba Ling, I think it's called. And it means like let it rot or let it burn or something like that. Because China is essentially big broing the entire country by making them work like six twelves a week. Uh, I forgot what it was called. It was like twelve twelve six or something like that. They have like this insane work schedule that would make us look freaking pathetic. Uh, where you'd work twelve hours a day for six days a week and the average pay over there i think the last time i looked it up was like twenty thousand dollars but like the young people over there are like so fed up with it that they're just like refusing to do anything to the point where they're there's like um, a social media virality but over in china they just like delete everything because they're really cool and um they're really cool especially like china their politics are so cool they just like they they, they definitely don't have any uh concentration camps with Uyghur muslims they don't conduct human experiments out of they're definitely not doing any of that yeah china is so cool anyway but like they don't give a fuck like it's not worth it like that's pushed like the the lifestyle that we're pushed to in america where we need to push 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 work hard work harder the boomers all talk shit about the young people and stuff like that that we don't want to work hard and we don't want anything in our lives um fuck them you know what I mean? Let the country burn for all I give a fuck about. Because, like, all the jobs out there suck. Every CEO just suck fucking... They, they fucking just, like, extort. They're, like, every chance they get, they're just like, oh, oh, where can we make... Oh, we need to make more money this uh, this quarter. What do we do? Oh, cut the labor staff. Burn and churn. Burn and churn. Like, the tech field and stuff like that, and the STEM field and stuff like that. We have the entire, like, most of our market that I'm just fucking... Now everything's exploding out of me. Sorry, sorry. But, like, the entire market is, like, predicated on... 
like going to college, which is like puts you minimum like twenty to forty grand in debt to go get a fucking shitty job working for a piece of shit shitty person who understands that you have a lot of debt to pay just entering the field with your degree. I think like in a way, employers are probably looking at people with degrees and going, "Oh, we can." They're going to be reliable. We can fuck them over because they're not going to say no because they have debts to pay. To lasso it back, fuck, just let it all let it all go. Fuck them, man. Like, don't pay your debts off. Like, there's, like, people I've been seeing on the internet saying, like, debt maxing. It's kind of a joke to max your credit cards out and stuff like that because there's no laws about putting you in jail. Now, I know if we did that probably out of, uh, like, on the, across the whole country that you're going to get a bunch of credit card companies probably forming lobbying groups to somehow make it uh, debt slavery. They'll push probably for, like, prison time with debt slavery or something like that. But, like... What, at what cost is any of this shit worth it anyway? Like, you know what I mean? Like, no, it's not. I mean, I have a lot going for me, but like, in the last seven, eight years, like, building what I got, it is, it is worth it, but it's only worth it because I did it for my family. But like, there's no will, there's no why, there's nothing like unifying the country collectively to like justify the bullshit. You know what I mean? And that's kind of what China's going through too. Like, back to that, like, the CCP. The movement, the Ba Lang movement is so big over there that they had multiple speeches saying that it's young people's responsibility to maintain the honor and integrity of the CCP. But if the honor and integrity of the, the, the entity that's fucking crushing you beneath their boot and not letting you just chill a little bit, not letting you have a little fun because they're just trying to squeeze you like these corporate fucks do. It's like, how can we squeeze the labor force? How can we fuck the labor force? Every time we bargain with them, how, how, much, how much can we take away before they'll finally just quit in mass and we got to walk it back? You know what I mean? Like, that's the attitude of these fucking, like, at least from my perspective, I, I, I'm, I'm willing to hear out CEO. I'm sure there's great businesses out there. The ones that are, like, probably pumping, like, for instance, the one I think off the top of my head because I watch them a lot is, like, Alex Hermosi and Leila, Leila Hermosi. Uh, they, they, they are such giving people, such strong leaders that are lead by example leaders. And I feel like besides, like, companies like them. Like, most of corporate America is just a bunch of fucking sniveling, sneaky weasels who fucking just want to suck the soul from you and then use that energy from your soul, your happiness, and your self-worth, and then inject that into the company so that they can quick get a quick bag and then, like, sell a company or burn insurance and just, like, raise their whatever the next quarter is. Short term, short term. They're always just thinking short term. And they took away the why from America. So, like, my advice to myself as a little kid, chill the fuck out. Fuck these people. None of them give a fuck about you, which is great in one way because then you kind of you don't have to like worry about pleasing them or anything like that. You're kind of free to move around because they don't even see you, but they're never going to love you. And that's what I wish somebody would have told me when I was fucking coming up. And that's the end of this video.